My name's Kelty, and introducing today's guest, Soul Cycle, the cult leader of the Instagram famous fitness girl from LA that loves green juice, is probably vegan, and loves wearing athleisure at all hours of the day. It's pretty self explanatory why I'm gonna do this video. I am also fall semi into that category of girls that really like fitness and like wearing athletic wear, and so eventually I had to do the cream of the crop, the most cultish number one Instagram story fitness class there is out there. So, yeah, I did it for the last month. I'm gonna bring you guys along, show you my experience, and how pandemic proof Soul Cycle is. Let's go. Now, I just moved from Toronto to Vancouver. I actually have been to a Soul Cycle there, and I'm gonna be honest, I am not a fan. But I do love a good spin class. Actually, spin classes are what got me hooked on group classes in the first place many years ago. YG Cycle back in Empton. I'm looking at you. Now, I've actually done this challenge way back in the day before I even had a channel that anyone watched, and I was doing Soul Cycle like five to seven times a week. It left me broken, bloated, just gaining weight and just not in a good place, but we're gonna talk about that at the end. This challenge, I tried to do it in a more realistic way that the average person would do it. Not balls to the walls for no rhyme or reason, I just did it. I did it one to two times a week, this challenge. So here's how the studio looks. I just googled fitness classes in Vancouver and the first thing that came up it was really close to me class I actually invited my friend Ash and her fiance Clark we went and did it and it was so much fun and it made me want to do this challenge because I just had a little bit of I don't want to say PTSD because that's not politically correct but I just had a little bit of trauma from the past remembering how much of a bad experience I had from doing it for 30 days excited not being like why am I here Okay, we're gonna go book my classes for the week. So I want the Tuesday, 8.30, no. number one, and then I'm booked. You know, I've done this so many times where it doesn't really give any notification, like, oh, you're booked in, like, I'm just booked. Like, classes, it's there. But the first few times I did this, and then, for example, Wednesday, I'll book the 7.15, pick my class, and then I, I'd book another bike, and so I book multiple. So just as a heads up, that's what you do, you click it and you're booked. And I've double charged myself. Anyways, that took me like 10 attempts before I noticed that. Psych! They also have this new book feature where you can book faster. If I go a week ahead of time, you can like reserve early if I do that. But then it just costs you $15. But if you really care and you have that money to blow, there's that. A few moments later. So I made a boo boo. I double booked myself and I realized I can't go to this 5 p.m. one on Monday. I can't control that. What you do is you go, you unreserve class. You're gonna be like, it's after 5 p.m. Oh yeah. So if you don't unreserve, you have to cancel your class 5 p.m. the day before. Otherwise, let's cancel. Aww. All set, we'll miss you. And I lost the $35. So no refund there. It's just gone into this. But it, it, it holds you accountable, but a whole day ahead of time. I wish it was like 12 hours. I'm sure you could call and be like, I have COVID, and then take me out. So beginning of week three of this uh, challenge, and honestly, it's good only going like twice a week because I'm so excited. It's like when you're excited to go to the bar and dance. It's kind of like that feeling versus like, oh, I'm gonna work out again. Like it's a perfect amount, They're like two times a week. Okay, so for that workout, we burned 
271. The cool thing I really like Soul Cycle does is they have like different trainers. For example, Tori I did. If you want a cool vibe, if you want like a grind, like hers I always say is like going up a hill. You're going up the hill, pushing yourself. You're like, it's kind of sultry, hip hop music. You get to the top and then you get that like finish line, hurrah at the end, like that's her class. Whereas another instructor, I forget her name, I'll insert it right here. Um, hers is like very much like, at an EDM festival, it, that's the best way I describe it. So it's a lot of just like intense with a drop and then like build yourself up intense and a drop and like personally that's like, I tend to gravitate towards more of that versus my best friend Ash, her style is more like Tories. And to add to that, like this one I only burned 270 calories, the other one I burned 470, but I wasn't sore, so it was a lot like less, I was about to get mad that the vehicle was ruined in my shot, but it was a fire truck. I just finished week three and I tried to film in the class, but unfortunately I'm not allowed to film in a soul cycle class. Actually technically I wasn't even allowed to bring my camera in there before the class started, but you know what better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So I'm gonna describe the class and reenact it. Stop interrupting me. Reenact it here using this. We're gonna sit on your bike. Each class is 45 minutes usually. There's a few 60 minute ones, but on average it's gonna be 45 minutes. There's about eight to 12 tracks. A track is the length of the song, and you're gonna do a kind of dance. Let me demonstrate. Thank you, thank you. So this is just no, you normally on a bike. There's different positions. There's one, when you're up here, just do, 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 do. There's up here, which you can't reach without going like this. So you actually have to stand. And then there's other little handles throughout. There's gonna be hand positions. There's a one, there's a three, and there's a five. And the instructor is pretty much gonna yell at you the entire time, but you're gonna grab up. So you're gonna be like, a three, da 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 da, a one. Sorry, I screwed it up. Be a one, a three. And then you're gonna do stuff like this. There's these like little dance moves. You can do ones where you're like this, you're gonna be up like this. <laughs> or sometimes they'll make you do crazy things. You're literally going like this, and it, I'm just gonna let you know, every class there's always someone who is clear their first time and their eyes are just like, what are you doing? And then there's the experts and you're looking and they've got like, they've got the good, the right foot leading and they look so cool doing it. And then usually those people like work at the front desk and they're like, they're experienced. Some studios have like flashing lights and all that. Soul Cycle's got none, it's got three candles. And then the second last track, usually they come and blow it out and it's, they don't instruct you and you just bike and it's just kind of borderline meditation. And honestly, I've cried during moments of it because you're like pushing so hard and I think back my first spin class and how much crap I was going through in life and I overcame it and they give you this inspiring talk and it's deep music, like meditation. That's where the soul in Soul Cycle comes from. And then you cry and then you're like, oh, this is so great and there's endorphins and then you're in the cult. <laughs> Like it's also <laughs> feels right. So week number three done. And I did an Instagram story asking you guys any questions you have about Soul Cycle, so I'm gonna answer them now. And first, the most important thing though about working out is looking cute. Because if you don't look at you, you don't feel cute. You don't want to work out, and the best way to look cute, gym shark. And if you click the link down below, all the Gymshark new releases are there and you can help support me as well because looking cute is half the battle. Question one, how much does it cost, how expensive it is? Here's the actual price in Canadian dollars, keep in, no, in American dollars, keep in mind. But on average, it's gonna cost you 25 to $30 a class. You can get memberships that maybe, if you do 10 a month, it's gonna drop down to like 22, but you can average about 25 to 30. Calories burned in one hour class versus one hour running. On average, I was anywhere from 250 to 450. Running, I'm usually 450 to 650. How bad does your butt hurt after? Okay, the first like three times you do it, your butt is gonna be so sore. And anytime you take a break from it, it's gonna be one or two classes. Or if you do a whole bunch of classes, like after like my fifth class in like, 10 days kind of thing, my butt hurts. So it's just about pacing yourself and you get kind of used to it. In a cult where they're all secretly velociraptors, yes. Is it better to go alone or with a friend? It's a great thing to do with your friend. That's like my favorite thing to do, but it's also a great way to meet friends. If you don't have any friends, go there and it's a great way to just like come in, meet people. You start to recognize people that work out at the same time as you, so either. Do you really trust how that you won't catch COVID here? Okay, I'm in Canada, so it's a bit 
better, especially in BC. We're kind of doing pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. They've done enough, but I'm not like wowed by the COVID protocols. Is it worth it? And would it kill a regular Joe like me to do it? I work out two to three times a week. Um, I think it's worth it. Maybe to do one time a week for a regular person, it, there is every different fitness level in there. The instructors are always next level fit, so keep in mind. But the people in the class, you'll find really fit people that do spin all the time. People like myself who do spin a bit, but are fit in other things. And then you find beginners. There's always like one or two new person in every class. What bougie touches do they have compared to other studios? It's just like little things, honestly. I've been to other studios that are kind of just as nice, the actual studio and the bikes. It's just It's more streamlined. They have the app. They have their logos everywhere. They have a Lulu pop-up shop with like their logo. So it just looks really crisp and nice. They have selfie spots. They always have a selfie spot. So those, the actual workout, Nothing too much different. So I'm gonna put on the screen here my results from all my workouts over the month. I burned anywhere from 250 to 350 calories. My heart rate was kind of in the 160-ish range, usually on average, which is very typical for me to do a 45 minute to 60 minute workout. I'm gonna put a disclaimer. When these classes say like, burn 800, 1200 calories an hour, they usually account for a 250 pound in shape male doing it. So yes, they can, but us females, so don't do one of these spin classes and be like, oh, I burned 1200 calories because if you did, that's super impressive, but it's also kind of false advertising on them. Good workout cardio hit training for someone my size. I'm just, ow, <laughs> put in that disclaimer. Because companies love to market you bogus stuff. Now, Research County checking in with some very exciting news because normally I'm known to just do simple research, but in today's episode, I did my own research. Yes, Research Kelty is a true scientist. Science. And my research was on how pandemic proof Soul Cycle is. It will be out of 10 scale. 10 being the best fitness class I've ever seen called Sweat and Tonic. At Sweat and Tonic, they have plexiglass stations for every individual, you're in your own box. They have a temperature thing that right when you walk in, they monitor your temperature, then you get it done with the gun. Right when you walk in, you have to fill out the forms. There's some fancy air circulation, which I won't bore you on because it's fancy, scientific terms. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I sound like Donald Trump there? But pretty much the air is as clean as it possibly can get. They have five janitors that clean every single thing afterwards. It is pretty much cleaner than anywhere else on earth. So that is what you have to do to get a 10 out of 10. A zero means I walked in and instantly got COVID. And there's the scale. First, there's a plexiglass wall between you and the check-in staff right when you come in. Also, you do all check-in via your phone now, so you don't have to directly contact with them and you have to fill out some forms if you don't have your form. There's limited scheduling. They have about half the classes they normally have to encounter for more cleaning. There's a bike between each bike. Yes, there's no plexiglass. They just use one of their old bikes, take off the seat just to make sure you keep your six feet away. That and keep in mind, they've been limited to about 10 to 15 people per class, depending on the studio you go to. Bathrooms limited. There is usually some toilets, sinks, stickers to make sure you keep six feet. It's a free for all once you get in there. Sometimes there's a lineup outside, but I did notice once you get into the studio, uh, it's just like any other studio class. You get in and there's a lot of bumping and you try and keep your distance and it's all right. They do clean the shoes and I noticed they clean the bikes right away, right after. I saw three people coming right in, so good on that. It is quite common at the end of a soul cycle class, you lift up your water bottle and swing your towels around. But for obvious reasons, swinging a sweaty towel around is uh, not very optimal in a pandemic, so that is gone. Overall, a 6 out of 10. I don't think I'll get COVID. I feel pretty safe, but they're not going above and beyond. If you are one of the populations that you are very worried about COVID, avoid soul cycle. If you're someone who doesn't believe in COVID and all that, well, go about your day and your conspiracy theories and we don't get time for you. But if you're somewhere in the middle and you're healthy and you are respectful of others and you keep your distance and realize the potential of being indoors, soul cycle is gonna be all right for you. A six out of 10 pandemic proof. Might get COVID, might not. <laughs> so to compare it to other bikes, I'm actually gonna walk over to Peloton. There's a Peloton pop-up shop here in Vancouver. Or it's pop-up, I don't know, it's a permanent shop. There's a Peloton shop here in Vancouver. I'm gonna walk over so you can kind of compare a Peloton bike to a Soul Cycle.
Here's what the original one looks like. Very similar to what we saw today. It has the weights there, this, or you can go there, and then it has the screen, of course, where you're gonna see the class. Now, this was the original Peloton, but they just upgraded. So they have this one now, which has this surround sound screen. You can move it around. I don't wanna break it, but that moves. And then this resistance, it automatically does it with the instructor. So instead of you having to do it yourself, it's just gonna go after the instructor's choice. So the bike itself, the Peloton and SoulCycle bike, are pretty much the exact same thing. There's really no difference. The only difference is one's at home, one's in a studio. So I would consider Peloton the at-home SoulCycle, that you get that community, you can be a part of challenges, you can find your favorite instructors. Like, it, they took the SoulCycle concept and put it virtual. So it's looking into the future. Now, cost-wise, a Peloton bike, the old one, is like 2,500. The new one is about 3,500. So yes, they're crazy expensive and there's a monthly subscription. So it really comes down to a Soul Cycle membership is gonna cost you anywhere from 150 to 250 a month, depending. So over 10 months, or that's gonna pay for it and that it's cheaper to get a Peloton long-term, but the initial cost, so it really comes, if you're gonna be a two to four times a week, every week for several years, the Peloton will actually be cheaper over time but if you're someone like me who just like hops in here or there, Soul Cycle is cheaper, probably long term. Maybe not, I don't know. So after 30 days of doing Soul Cycle, not every day, <laughs> but consistently, um, I'm gonna name my top three pros, top three cons. First pro, great music. Soul Cycle wins for the best soundtracks. Honestly, I wanna steal them and just play them when I work out. Like, it, it's just the perfect build up each time and you feel like you're in a nightclub. Second, play off that. That paired in with these super fit, great, motivating instructors. It is so motivating. Like, you wanna push yourself. There, I'm like, I wanna dig deep for myself. Like, they're really good at doing that. Three, it, if you need a great sweat and a community, that is what I love about spin class. If you're new to a city or you don't have a lot of friends, you want a great way to be part of a community, I've always turned to spin classes for that when I'm new to a city. It's just like dip your foot in the fitness scene and there's just a lot of like-minded people that are super supportive. So I met a subscriber that actually works at SoulCycle, so Alejandra. We're gonna call her Ali for short. So I just wanted to ask her, what is your like favorite thing about SoulCycle? Any benefits you saw? My favorite thing about SoulCycle is that each class is different in its mm -hmm. own way. And it just hits you in different ways in your body. And it is a full body workout. And it's like more than just a workout. It also like kind of like helps cleanse your soul in a way. It's like another spiritual connection to it. And that's just one thing I really, really love about SoulCycle. Well, and community, it should be the foundation of fitness in my opinion that's the way to make it sustainable and just it becomes part of your social life like that's what i love what is a good community love but speaking of love let's go the opposite and let's talk the cons this is not the solution to everything it is not a one size fits all workout it is not going to cure all your fitness you can't just do spin classes and be an overall athlete spin is really good for endurance muscle endurance calories, cardiovascular strength. You can work on explosiveness, do it in specific ways. But if all you do is spin, 
all you care about being a cyclist. A cyclist has to do other types of exercise to counteract just the repetitive motion of doing just cycle slash spin. So no, it's not just, I do spin, that's all I need to do. Like you could, but it's just not ideal. Two, to go off that, it does not work on mobility. You're just moving this way. There's a bit of that, but at no point you even do this. Like, so you can easily injure yourself if you just repetitively do the same motions. So there's a lot of areas of fitness just in terms of health and other things that you need to do to counteract just being like hunched over and doing cardio this way. I would chronically pull my hip muscle doing this. I'd sit down on the toilet and this would lock. So I'd get up and be like stuck like this getting up the toilet and then I couldn't and this was completely locked and straightening felt like it would rip my hip flexors. That stopped happening when I started doing mobility stuff and not just doing soul cycle, things like that. That I started adding other types of exercises that has completely gone away and I haven't had that hip lock in months. Third, it is not cheap. It is not cheap. It is a very expensive form of fitness. And so that's why I like it as like I treat myself. Like once a week I meet girlfriends and we go do a soul cycle class and then we go have a brunch and that's like a thing, which is a lot cheaper than back in the day when our things would start drinking at 10 p.m. and go to instead of 4 a.m. And that was, this is a lot actually more cost efficient, but it's not like an everyday thing. Unless you have the money, um, I just don't. How do? Now my results, when I did it for like 30 days, so pretty much I was doing it like 20 to 25 times a day, a month, not a day, oh my God, versus when I was doing it one to two times a week. Now what happened last time I did it five times, I ugh, I just did not feel healthy. Pretty much what would happen, just be 100% transparent, I would gain like three pounds every day I did soul cycle. What would happen is like my body was chronically stressed and also I wasn't doing any of the rehab outside it, I was just doing that. So I do the soul cycle class and then I, or the spin class or whatever it was, and then the next day be up three pounds without changing how I ate, how I drank. I almost became too obsessive because the scale was going so all over the place and I was trying to control it and that added more stress. And whenever I add stress to my body, I get really bloated and water retention. Now, yes, sometimes there's the counteract that you get stressed, bloated, and you eat more, and you're stressed, and, you, and that's hard. But, but I, I became, like, and it was just like a really toxic cycle I got in. It was kind of like, hey, I have to do more cardio because I'm gaining this weight. And it was just like, and then it was like five pounds up by the end of the month, and I was like, what's going on? And I got trapped into this cycle, and I think I actually went on vacation or travel or something. There was a reason I stopped, and it was just like, whoosh, just like instantly down. <laughs> Now I just moved and that's a lot of stress coming from moving and not going so extreme. All I've been doing is kind of just going on walks, working on my mobility, my stretching, everyday mobility work like for my ATP and then doing soul one or two times a week. And I just feel, I haven't lost any weight but I just feel good. Like my stomach feels nice and flat and good. I don't feel bloated. I just feel good. I feel myself. I haven't lost a single pound. I haven't get, I'm just like maintaining but my body feels good. Now I wish I had recorded the first time I did it, but the only way I described was like the bloatiness. Like this would have been me before. Like my legs were swollen. Like I felt like it was kind of like this all the time. Swollen and like this puffiness versus now, I don't think I'm leaner necessarily, but it's just my legs just feel, you know, there's still something to them, but they just feel healthy and lean and good. Do you know what I mean? And like same with my stomach and my arms. And it's not about being skinny and it's not just about being lean and shredded, but it's just not holding on to that extra inflammation that I think we've all had that feeling before. And that's what is so much different this time around. I feel healthy and vibrant. So like I'll show you my after where I'm at, but it's just kind of like not a break. It's just, I just feel healthy. I feel good. So let me know down in the comments, any other fitness classes you guys want me to try your guys' experience with SoulCycle or Spin Studios in general. And yeah, just anything. Thank you for tuning in. Like always, hope you guys have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you. Bye. Also, friendly reminder, because yes, at the beginning, I don't have the before pictures from a long time ago uh, to show this crazy swollenness. Friendly reminder, I stand like this, no thigh gap. I stand like this, thigh gap. 
all the girls on Instagram do it too. Because I wanted to be 100% transparent, because when you see my thigh gap photo, I want you guys all to remember that I'm posing hard AF to have this thigh gap we all chase after. And yes, my thighs touch sometimes, and that's okay, because all a thigh gap comes down to is your hip positioning 99% of the time, and you're beautiful if you have a thigh gap, and if you're beautiful if you don't, and it just comes down to genetics, like if you're a blonde, brunette, or redhead. Love you all. Be kind to yourself. Because a dog would love you regardless.